when I was a kid in high school, Marcus Haynes was the star of the Harlem Globetrotters. I'm here with Marcus Haynes, an old friend of mine, and you probably uh, know his name because if you follow the Harlem Globetrotters, Marcus is the guy that Bill Russell called the best dribbler in the world. The world's greatest dribbler, and Marcus Haynes. Marcus, you've often told me a story about a game where one of your opponents said he wasn't going to get out there and be made a fool out of. Can you tell us that story? <laughs> well, <laughs> I love that one. Well, no, that, that was some, some years ago. I was during uh, Claire B's uh, time of uh, coaching up at LIU. Yeah. And we were playing uh, an all star game against the College of All-Americans. All yeah. And uh, the guy, uh, Claire B asked his. As one of his players tried to guard me. And the player looked at Claire B and said, Oh, coach, hell, I'm not going to let him get out. I'm not going to go out there and let him make a fool out of me. <laughs> I, got, I got some video of them two on one in you, and you get down on the floor, and they still couldn't get the ball from you. <laughs> well, you know, the hand sometimes is crooked in the eye. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and I had both. So I had the eyes and I had the, the hands. eyes and the hands yeah, and, and the feet and, too. And quick hands. <laughs> well, I was laying down, so I had to do a little bit of scooting, <laughs> scooting around and around, kind of in a circle. How many people can lay yeah. down on the floor dribbling and two guys can't get the ball away from them? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know, to tell you the truth, they might have been doing me a favor. Is that right? And, but in the meantime, uh, the, the one player had told his. His coach that uh, he wasn't going to get out there and guard me, bro. That's gonna right. Make a fool out here. <laughs> fool out here. <laughs> and then uh, one of the other fellows that on tour with the Harlem Globetrotters, and uh, he was with the team called the Washington Generals. Yeah. And he came out, he was substituted. And uh, the guy asked me, he said, Well, Marcus, when are you going to dribble? I said, Well, no, tell you what, I'll be doing the kind of dribbling. He said, Well, when. Uh, but when I'm, I'm guarding it, so what do you want me to do when you start driving? I said, what do you mean what I want you to do? Do you want me to fix this, fix this? No, no, you know, you try to get the damn ball. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So that's where the fun Yeah, is. you know, a lot, uh, a lot of people think that that was fake because they uh, think, how could, you know, two guys not be able to get the ball away from you? None of them was no, fake, was it? I Every had, one of them, they I, were actually trying, weren't they? I had a whole team in Mexico trying to get the ball from <laughs> me. They put six guys out there on the court. Mexico, <laughs> Mexico, no, where is Mexico? Uh -huh. and, we, and then we left there and went to, uh, to uh, oh, what's it called? I named the town just a second ago. Well, we had a tour in Mexico. Yeah. So we played it throughout. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you were in Monterey, they, weren't you? That was Monterey, but uh, they, they put the whole team on me. <laughs> But I told them, no, wait. That's funny. Now, the whole team is all right with me, but what we got to do. Marcus, I want to show you this picture here. See if we can get this. <laughs> yeah, I think I've seen that guy before. Now, you've seen this guy before? Yeah. Now, uh, what the heck is going on? He's shooting from behind his back. Now, do you, is it possible for him to make that basket? I got news for you. He made it often. <laughs> he did. He, he was disappointed he didn't make it. Yeah. If he didn't make it on the first one, he certainly made it on the second one. Uh-huh. <laughs> all, all was from the end zone. Yeah. You, how did you learn to play the way that you did? That's that's really uh, interesting. I mean, you you taught yourself, didn't you? Well, it's one of these things that you call practice, practice, practice. So practice is important. I used to go into the uh, <laughs> gymnasium. I had to always, when I was in high school, I had a key to the gym. Mm -hmm. When I was in college, I always had the key to the gym. Yeah. Because in the evening, sometimes it was, it was, uh, as late as midnight, yeah. I would be in a gymnasium by myself, mm -hmm. just practicing dribbling, passing the ball, and shooting. Dribbling, passing the ball, and shooting. So wow. that's, that's what it took. That's what it takes. So, to you were, so you had the key so you could break into the gym and work out. Oh, I kept, <laughs> I, I kept, I kept the key. <laughs> That's one of the things I requested yeah. from the coach that I had to have a key to the gym. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, by myself, I could do a lot of things that I couldn't do with other guys. Oh, I, right. uh -huh. you know, I practiced on a lot of things uh, diligently, yeah. so to speak. And I did this mainly because I knew I was going to go up against some of those same guys that I uh, mm -hmm. the team with me the time yeah. that, that we practiced. And, you know, they would, uh, they would 
give up on. In fact, I was playing with a team called the Washington Generals one year. And uh, the, the player guarding me came up to me and said, well, Marcus, what is it that you want me to do? I said, what do you mean I want you to do? He said, well, I'm talking about when, you, when you're killed. You want me to do this one? He said, oh, hell, I want you to try to take the damn ball. <laughs> so he couldn't take the ball. Yeah. So he, he called a timeout. So he, he came over and he had his coach come off the bench because he wanted to ask me a question. He said, well, Marcus, can I get somebody to help me? Help me uh, to, <laughs> with, with trying to take the ball. Yeah. He said, yeah, you get the whole damn team if you want to. <laughs> I couldn't care less. <laughs> so one of the guys, he told his coach, he said, hell, I ain't going to let him make a damn fool out of me. I'm going to sit here on the bench with you. <laughs> It's safer to be on and, the bench. And that was during the time of Clara B. Uh, he was a very popular coach. He called coach at uh, Long Island University team. And uh, he go up and told his coach, hell, coach, you ain't going to make a damn fool out of me. I'm sitting on the bench with you. <laughs> yeah. So, boy, you better get your so-and-so back out there. And so he came back out. But he said, Mark, what do you want me to do? I said, that's why he put you out here, to help your other friends try to get, get, get the ball from you. <laughs> He said, I can't get that ball. I'm just going to fake it. I said, yeah. <laughs> well, it's up to you. See, I'm not your coach. Didn't they, didn't they time how many, how fast you could dribble the ball once? Well, yeah, there's so many seconds. Well, uh, uh, so many bounces in, in just in five seconds. Uh -huh. But the thing was that I uh, started a dribble from the, just the dead ball. It said center court. They put a ball at center court. Yeah. And that's to stand at the other end of the court. And at full speed. Just go out and start that ball off the dribble from mm -hmm. the dip, from the, uh, just, just not bouncing at all. Yeah. We couldn't understand it. Right. And a lot of them, <laughs> a lot of them with this, a lot of guys attempted to do it. <laughs> uh, they asked me if I could show them how. I said, no, I don't, I don't show everything. <laughs> well, I saw Bill Russell say uh, that you oh. were the greatest dribbler ever, and I, I really believe that. There was nobody that could do what you did, and there still is not. I have never seen anybody that can do what you did. Well, to my knowledge, uh, you know, it takes it takes something that you call practice. Practice, practice, practice. practice, practice. practice. A lot of guys don't have the time, don't take the time mm -hmm. to practice, practice, practice. Yeah. And it's something that you have to practice. Everybody wants the rewards, yeah. but they don't want to do the work. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Marcus, you know I'm running for office now. I'm running for Texas Railroad Commissioner. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things I'd like you to do is, number one, how long have we known each other? Is it, I don't know, has it been 10 years? Mm -hmm. Something like that. About 10 years? Yeah. Uh, well, I thought maybe you were going to say it's too long. Doing each other too long. Too long. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you're going to make me sound older. Than well, I am. Yeah, that's what I want to know what, what is too long. Uh, yeah. Now. Too long sometimes just be a, a little while. Another 20 years will be too long, maybe. I don't know. Well, no, another 30 years. Well, another 30 years will be welcome. Yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> At least. I'm for that. Uh -huh. uh, let me ask you, I would just like you to comment on something because I have an opponent whose staff is calling uh, people and saying that I made racist statements about their candidate, who happens to be an African American, and says he's a conservative. And uh, of course, I did not make those statements. Uh, I would like you just, you know, I'll just let you say whatever you well, well, like. You know. Have you ever heard me make a statement that might be racist? No, no, I've never heard you make a statement that might be racist. And, you know, it's a statement that uh, I don't think that you could make even if you wanted to. Well, I'm not that you stupid, you, you Marcus. Wouldn't, you, know, <laughs> you wouldn't know what the hell to say or how to put it. That's right. <laughs> well, it, it takes know-how to do things. Yeah. No, I have never heard you make no. it. Not, not anywhere close to one. Well, one of the interesting things is I think that this opponent of mine doesn't realize that I am mixed race myself and it would just really be it would be I'd be stabbing myself in the back if I made racist statements <laughs> so well, well, it's, sometimes uh, opponents or uh, other people they don't take the time to think about what they might be saying yeah. now maybe this person uh, knew what he was trying to say or what mm -hmm. he was saying trying to put you down yeah oh but, yeah you know but I've always said uh, always 
said to myself and said to anybody else that you can't put a good person down. And you say anything that you want to, but you can't put them down. Well, and good, thank you. You can try, but you can't make it. You know, in politics, it's a lot like when you you went up for that jump shot and the guy comes back with his elbow. And <laughs> that's, uh, especially when you get this close, we're almost, we're just about a week away from election day, so things get really nasty. Well, I got news for you. I don't think, if I were you, I wouldn't worry about it. You know, you're going to push it, you're going to talk about it, and let, let it be known what you mm -hmm. can do and what you have done in the past and your yeah. friends are, and just everything about yourself. Yeah. But in the meantime, I wouldn't let it bother me. Well, not everything, Marcus. There's some things I wouldn't want to tell. Well, those, <laughs> those, you got to, those you got to hold back. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's you, right. You've been throwing yourself you're, out. You're, you throwing yourself out the ball. You're, you're the only guy that I know who has nothing in his past that he has to hide. <laughs> well, I would, well, if I tried to, I couldn't. Yeah, that's right. Because I've been too open all my you, life. You've been public all your life, so there's yeah. nothing. Yeah, mm -hmm. everything is available about you. Because if I tried to uh, misuse it, somebody sitting in front of you over there would correct me. That's right. Real quick. And it's on a video uh, somewhere. Uh, yeah, somewhere. I'm going to, uh, on this video, I've got some footage of you. Uh, dribbling in a game with two guys on one trying to get the ball from you and you get down on the floor and they still couldn't get it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show that in here. Well, uh, people oh, that would be great. Hi. Uh, this is Joan. Joan Haynes, Marcus's wife. Uh, and she's joining us. And I would like to let her say a word to you for a moment, please. Okay, Joan? Well, hello, everyone. Uh, I've known Al, my husband and I, for a little over 10 years, and um, I'm excited about the fact that he's running for public office, and even though we're on different sides of the coin when it comes to politics, uh, the thing that's important to us uh, is the character of the man. Uh, I am a Democrat, and I uh, come from a traditional family of Democrats. But I support Al because of the character of his heart and his mind. Uh, he's always been a man of integrity. He's been a kind, generous man. I've never heard any racist statements come from him. And I'm also a spiritual woman, so our spirits have connected, and they connected from the very first day that we met, and just always, always been on that level. Even though I wouldn't <laughs> agree with his politics, we don't. I, and we don't. But we respect each other, and we have a right to to have the voice that we have in this country. But as a person, as a human being, a man of integrity, and you believe in what he believes in, I would vote for him. Absolutely. Well, thank you, John. You're going to have to vote in the Republican primary vote for you, though. All shots.